What's happening guys, JD at JD's Custom Buggies. Um, this is kind of late because I think I built this almost two years ago, but uh, never got to do a completed um, video on it, so it's here now. So I figured we'd do a quick walk around. It's a pretty unique buggy. It's pretty cool for what it is. So uh, come with me and I'll take you on a trip. So this is actually a first generation Carter Talon. Um, doesn't look much like one. And how you distinguish a first gen from like the later gen is lack of a luggage rack. So basically the back of the cage just kind of curves around back to the seat and holds the gas tank and that's all you get. So um, that's what this began as. And he had it for a while and I believe he even raced it like that as your typical Carter Talon uh, for a moment. I think we switched the tires and wheels on it, built him a motor. And, um, and then in the second season, we wanted to do something with suspension. So we got into what shocks can we use and um, you know, get it to soften up and everything. So um, that's kind of how it started. And then I had this idea in my head um, about extending it. The first thought was we would try and adapt some um, like later gen Trailmaster or Hammerhead uh, extended arms on there that you would find on like a GTS Platinum Hammerhead or a Trailmaster Blazer. And that was the first thought. Hey, let's take these longer arms. We'll get more room and then I can, we'll, we'll come up with a way and I'll mount a blaster shock in the front, which I had done on some other buggies. Um, and then in the middle of all that, somehow it kind of took a huge left. And I had this idea in my head about how could I replace a strut, um, come up with a different system, just something with more articulation, something that was a little more bulletproof, more reliable. So I had the idea of building my own strut and, and maybe using it on this buggy. And um, this idea went from, it had been in my head for a while, but basically once I got the idea, I, I started cutting and welding and whatnot and came up with this idea for a strut. And my biggest thing was I wanted to put heim joints on there. Couldn't figure out a way to put them on. You know, I thought maybe of taking a regular strut, putting tabs on it and using heim joints on the end of the arms to help it give it more articulation and to widen it out a little bit. Um, so that was my first thought. Um, and then I'm like, well, let me try and build my own strut. So that's kind of what I did. My first thought was to take tubing and I don't know why I just didn't like the idea of, you know, being round and everything to make sure all the tabs are perfectly lined up vertically. Um, I needed a little more point of reference, so I kind of cheated. And I'm like, well, let me try and make the struts rectangular or square. Um, my first thought was to take two inch tubing, two by one inch tu rectangular tubing. Um, I didn't like in my head how that looked. So I cut a bunch of quarter inch flat stock and came up with this idea. Um, so basically what I did was lay the stock strut on a table and kind of jig the angle of where the spindle stub and the angle of the strut goes up and uh, drew it out on a table and then kind of went from there. Um, once I built the first one, I, uh, I jigged it for the second one. And what I did was took a bunch of flat stock. Um, it started out with a, with a piece of, piece of uh, two inch rectangular tubing here. I drilled the hole, put the, put the spindle stub through it and then figured out the angle that it needed to come up because if you look at your strut um it's not perpendicular to the the spindle stub itself isn't perpendicular to the strut it kind of has an angle um so that the strut actually leans in but the the spindle stub itself is is uh, parallel with the ground so once i got that was the hardest part was getting that angle and then when i once i got that um i just i wanted to come up with a way where it, it kind of uh, it had bracing, inner bracing and whatnot. I just didn't want to take these two pieces of uh, flat stock and, and set them like that and weld them at the end. So then I came up with this idea as, as far as putting like a, uh, a diagonal cross brace in there and, uh, and kind of welded it all together and then put some tabs on it for a heim joints. Um, the other thing that I had in my head that I thought I would try is, um, is the heim joints are actually mounted, one's mounted vertically and one mount is mounted um, horizontally. I want to give it as much articulation, but allow it to turn as much as possible. And I've never tried that before. I've never tried to take a heim joint going one way and then, uh, you know, putting the upper one different than the lower. Um, 
So this was a complete experiment and so far, I mean the buggy is fast, it handles great, especially for a strut buggy. Um, Scott's really happy with it. So what I was going to do is kind of, okay, now I had this idea and like I said, we, we basically completed this project in a day. So I mean that's a lot of thought process and fabricating to come up with in, in one day's time. So my, my next thought was what I was going to do is basically just take the upper lower stock arm hack the end off, put a bung on the end, kind of like I do with the Yerf dogs, and mount my heim joints on the end. Well, the top I, I did, I used this, I, I knocked the bushings out, um, the plastic bushings, um, and then it, it just wasn't working right. So I, although I used this piece here, the rest of the arm actually ended up getting all cut off, and I, I came up with this, and, and it's, it's thick as hell, but, um, it works good. It's totally bulletproof. Um, and then my next thought was, okay, for the lowers, and the problem I have with the lowers is that the, the mounts on the bottom of the frame for the lower arms are just a hair different than the Trailmaster and the Hammerhead arms. So you can take a Trailmaster arm and a Hammerhead arm. You can swap them out. The mount spread is just a hair, and I'm talking about a hair. You could literally force it in there. Um, but you'd have to bend and kind of wall about the hole to get things to line up and work and whatnot. So ended up scrapping that idea, got the Carter arm, jigged the spread on that, made my own bottom arms, um, and then put the heim joint on there. So the trick was, and it wasn't that hard because getting the lengths right, I had some adjustability with the heim joints growing in and out. So I figured at the very least I could kind of, I could kind of get it back, to, you know, adjust the camber back out if I needed to. Um, but I mean, like I said, it's probably the most I've done in one day completely come up with the front end from scratch and, and had it, you know, started in the morning and had it bolted on and turning by, by the end of the evening. So next thing was because we widened it out. The next thing that was different was, uh, um, I had to come up with tie rods. So because this is a stock steering rack and this is an offset rack, if you look at your your more modern strut buggies, they usually have an even rack where the boots are the same length. Well, this, this, this rack here and these older buggies were offset. So they're off center. So the one boot is shorter, the driver's side boot is shorter than the passenger side boot. So we had to use the stock rack. So I needed to, um, I needed to use the whatever thread was here. So I ended up cutting a tie rod and then adding um, I put it on a lathe and turned it down so it actually fit inside this half inch bung and then welded it up for this half inch heim joint on the on the end here. What's also different is, uh, as far as the geometry is concerned is that these um, these uh, tie rod tabs they actually they're not just sticking straight out like on your typical strut buggy they're actually a little more uh, Ackerman correct so it's closer to the wheel and as you turn the wheel. Um, you know, you want your inside wheel to turn sharper than your your right side wheel because the inner circle or the, the track that the inside wheel is taking is a lot shorter than the outside wheel. If that wheel turns harder than your inside wheel, it's going to tend to push or, or you know, um, you know, kind of plow through the turn. So I want to make sure the acumen was correct. So that's why the position of, of the strut here or the uh, tie rod tab here. Um, as far as the suspension. Ended up mounting blaster shocks on it, so she's got a, they're, they're pretty heavy duty. The front shocks from a um, from a Yamaha blaster um, that I had around, and then in the rear, once we get to the rear, the, and this was a uh, like a second or third trial on, on different things. At first, he kept the stock shock, then he he got some blaster knockoffs, and they were very stiff. And I had these Honda TRX 400 shocks, so I moved the location of the shock mounts. Kind of split the difference between the two and ended up mounting them. You can't really see the actual shock because he's got shock covers on them. Um, for wheels, we've got uh, Raceline Mamba wheels, I believe they are. And um, that's not a real bead lock. They're just the look of the wheel. Um, but, the, you know, they have the rivets through the wheel or the screws through the wheel. Um, it's just the look of the wheel. It's not a true bead lock wheel, but they are very, very sharp. And they are cast aluminum. Um, tire wise, I forget what he's got on the rear. Oh, GBC ground busters on the rear. Um, and I believe we have GBC XC masters on the front. He's running 21, uh, 22 inch seven, uh, 22 seven tens on the front. And I want to say it's a 2011 nine on the back. 
Um, I guess the other most noticeable difference between this and your stock, a uh, stock card of talent is the, the roll cage and the center seating. So we talked about putting a roll cage on it and then we kind of, he, he, you know, I, as I started pretty much uh, spooling up to do the cage on it, he said, how hard would it be to make it a center seat? So it's really, it's, it's not super hard to do. It's just a little tedious because you got to relocate everything. And, and usually it's by cutting and relocating the mounts, uh, the mounting tabs for the pedals. And that's the hardest part. So um, the hardest part is cutting them off. Getting them in position and welding them back in is not quite as hard. So we moved all the pedals to the center. Um, gives you, pl obviously, plenty of room in the cabin. And this is really a narrow two-seated buggy anyway. So it kind of lends itself to being a single seater. It's not overly wide, like you're sitting in the middle of something that's, that you know, you can put your arms and you can't get your arms out of it either side. And uh, so, I mean, as far as non-modifying the cabin portion of it, it, it kind of looks like it should have been a single seater. Um, we moved the, uh, we just moved the steering tube, cut it off, moved it to the center. Um, wasn't a big deal as far as the U-joint still, or the uh, steering shaft and the U-joint still worked fine. Um, seat wise, we were looking for a different seat because we have a bench seat uh, originally in there and now we need to come up with, uh, you know, a mono seat. So this was a seat that I had laying around. It, I think it originally was from a Polaris, uh, 2012 Polaris Razor 570 that I had sitting around. I thought I would put it in a buggy eventually. Um, what I ended up doing is basically welding some, some flat stock to the bottom of the seat and then drilling holes and just bolting the seat down. So four bolts and the seat comes out. It's got a Pro Armor racing harness in it. The fenders, um, some of the paint is chipping off, but this is a, a blue um, Trailmaster Blazer fender. I thought it would kind of look cool to use. It's a, it's a cool shaped fender. I thought it would be cool to put on like a more retro buggy, you know, more modern fender on the retro buggy. So he, he kind of liked the look of it and the color. Um, he went with a Yamaha blue. So um, this was kind of close and it bolted right up and it, and it makes it look unique. And actually the fender coverage on this is better than what, what the stock fender was. Um, Motor-wise, basically MBX pretty much spec motor. I know he's got um, some uh, Dr. Pooley hardware and it's clutching. Um, motor is a 61 millimeter. Uh, port and polish to head myself. Uh, Cam selection, I believe A13 or A14, can't remember right off the bat. Uh, it's got the JD's Custom Buggy slide carb kit on it, um, which is, you know, starts at the carburetor and ends up at the floorboard. Um, velocity stack, that comes with the kit. Two inch unifilter and the JD's Custom Buggy's Rattler pipe. So, um, pretty stout buggy. Usually it's a top three buggy all the time. Um, he's actually passed me a couple times on the track, made me fight for it. So. Uh, for a strut buggy, it, it's a different animal. Um, what I didn't expect or what I didn't realize, which is kind of cool, is um, between the short wheelbase, it does it does take jumps pretty well. Um, he might have a, a little bit harder section, like a whoop or a harder time in a whoop section, but it's got like so much more ground clearance than um, just about every other strut buggy on the track. And what's nice about it is it, when you're sitting in it, you don't feel like you're up that high. It doesn't feel tip. You don't feel like it's up that high. Uh, handles great. He's able to slide it and put it in the corners really hard. So overall, he's pretty happy with it. So um, that's pretty much all I got for you with this one. But I, I figured it would be a shame not to share it with you because it's just so different. Um, roll cage, I don't know what there is really to talk about. Every roll cage is different on it. Um, but, you know, every, at this point, most of the MBX guys just kind of let me have my liberty to it or have my liberty with it just because I never know what it's gonna be. I, I don't know until it's done. And it, usually the best cages, like if I start complaining about how much I hate the look of it at the beginning of it when I'm making it and I just kinda, you know, power through and force through, by the time it's done, I think some of the best cages that I build are best looking buggies or some of the buggies that I swore I hated putting, you know, like I didn't like the look of the cage and hated it from the get. Ended up. So I think this guy's a really cool, unique look, and I just try to make every cage look like maybe the same person built it, but I want them all to look different. So I just don't go back into the same thing and pull it out so you have a bunch of redundant looking things. Um, this is the most fun I have probably on the buggies itself because I just feel the overall look is the fine.
hit by the cage. So I kind of like to uh, push myself and do different things with each buggy. And, and some things, uh, I think, you know, some things in my mind turn out a lot better, but everybody's got a difference in opinion because the things I tend to trash that I've already done, people tend to like the best. So it just kind of shows that everybody's taste is a little different. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty confident that if he rolls over, he's gonna be just fine in this thing. And um, it, it's definitely a unique look from every other buggy I've ever built. So at that note, I will leave you with uh, with uh, the overall product here. And uh, thank you for joining me again. Thank you for letting me share. And for the next video, see you guys later.